So in this lesson we're going to look at some quick examples on multiplying and dividing algebraic fractions. When you're multiplying algebraic fractions, all you're really doing is merging those fractions together by multiplying the top and the bottom. Now if you see any common factors when you're doing that, what you can do is also cancel those out. So I'll show you how that happens as well. So what we're doing here is multiplying 3 times a, and you get 3a. On the bottom we've got 4 times a squared, or a squared times 4. That's going to give us 4a squared. Now the common factors I spoke about, you can see that 3s and 4s don't have any common factors, so there's nothing to cancel there. But what we've got here is a, and on the denominator we've got a multiplied by a. So you can think of it like this, we've got 3 times a on the top, and down here we've got 4 times a times a. Now because they're all multiplying, we can then cancel out one of these a's on the bottom with the a on the top. And we're left with 3 over... 4a. Now you could have actually sped up the entire process by recognizing that this a squared on the bottom was going to cancel out with the a on top. And we could have done this, we could have said there's one there and there's two here, there's a times a, so I'll just get rid of one of them by cancelling out that squared value. And you're left with 3 on top and 4 times a on the bottom. So you can see we get the same thing there. So that's a quick way of doing it and as you practice you'll be able to see those shortcuts. For the second question, this 2 is going to multiply onto the a plus 2 on the left hand side, so it's all merging together again, except you need to see that this 2 right here is going to be placed outside of these brackets. It's a plus 2, it multiplies onto all of it. So you've got 2 outside of a plus 2, and on the bottom you've got 3a. So 2 times a, I'll just put our little arrows in here to show what's going on. 2 times a is there, and 2 times 2, the 2 multiplies a second time. So you're going to be left with this, 2 times a is equal to 2a, and 2 times 2 is 4, and then we have 3a on the bottom. Now don't make the mistake of trying to cancel out that a with the a on top here, because this a needs to be a common factor across the entire numerator. So an example where you could cancel things out would be if I change this 3 into a 2, for example. So a different example, I'll just put this here in green. If I had 2a plus 4 over 2a. What I could do then is notice that I have a factor of 2 here, a factor of 2 there, and a factor of 2 here with this 4. So I could go and pull this apart. I could go and pull the factors out. I'd have 2 outside of a plus... How many factors of 2 go into 4 there? You'd have 2 of them. All over 2 times a. And now I could see that I've got this 2 that's multiplying an a, and I've got 2 that multiplies onto a plus 2. So that would leave us with a plus 2 over a. But once again, you can only do that because the 2 is common to both of these values here. Down here, we don't have a over here on the 4a. It's not common right across the numerator, so you can't start cancelling them out. So over here, that's a different example. It's just showing you how it works, but it's not part of our questions here. Now here we've got 4x multiplying onto x plus 1 over 2. Whenever you see a value like this and you're thinking, I have to multiply fractions, but that's not a fraction, all you need to do is go and turn it into a fraction by doing this, 4x over 1. So 4x is now multiplying onto that top value of x plus 1, so I'll place it like this, 4x outside of x plus 1, all over 1 times 2 is 2. Now if you like, we can see that this 2 is going to become a common factor because 4 is multiplying everything there. So before we move on, what I'll do is I'll change that 4 into, well probably an easier way to look at it is 2 times 2 for now. So I'll just rub it out and I'll make it 2 times 2, which is 4, and you've got x there still. And now I can go and cancel that out. So I can cancel out 1, 2 on the bottom with 1, 2 on the top. So we've just sped the process up a bit. If we expanded everything out as it was with 4x, it would still work. It just means we'd have to go and cancel out factors at the end. So this is probably going to make things quicker for us. So now we've got 2x multiplying onto x. So 2x squared. And 2x times 1 is 2x. Here that 2 doesn't come into play anymore because we've already cancelled it out. So there's our final answer. For question 4, what we're going to do is see if we can speed the whole process up by looking for any common factors and cancelling them out. So here we've got 3's running through the entire 3x plus 15, so I'll just 
pull those out, we've got 3 outside of x plus 5, because 3 times 5 gives you your 15. We're also timesing 2, which is over here, and I'm going to put the whole thing over the one line there, and we've got x times 3. I can make it 3 times x. And now what we're doing is we're just going to cancel out those 3s straight away, because everything is joined together there by multiplication. Even though you've got the plus there, it doesn't really affect things because it's 3 times x, 3 times 5, times 2, and we've got 3 times x on the bottom. What I can do is cancel out that 3 and that 3 there, and we're left with this. We've got times 2 multiplying onto the x. You can see that times 2 is on the right-hand side now. It doesn't really affect things. If you had it on the left or the right, it's the same thing. It just multiplies into the bracket. And the times 2 is also multiplying onto the plus 5. So what we're going to get is 2 times x, 2x, and 2 times 5 is 10. That's plus 10, all over just a value of x. And there's your final answer. So for the last couple of questions, what we're going to be doing is using division instead. But these are really, really easy. As soon as you see division between two fractions, all you need to do is turn that division symbol into multiplication once again, and then flip the fraction that comes after it. So that's called getting the reciprocal of that fraction. Reciprocal means simply turn it upside down. The 2 on the bottom goes to the top, and the x minus 1 goes to the bottom. So really all we've got here is x minus 1 on the top, on the bottom we've got our 3. Now the divided by sign becomes times instead. And here we've got 2 on the bottom. I'm going to go and place that on the top. So this is a reciprocal now. I'm flipping it upside down. x minus 1 on the top goes to the bottom. Now this question also has something special happening. We have these common factors on the top and the bottom. You might not see them, but they're right here. What we're doing is we're multiplying x minus 1 on the bottom. And on the top, we're also multiplying all of x minus 1. So you can cancel those out. Another way of looking at it is this. We've got 2 multiplying onto x minus 1. So it's 2 outside of x minus 1. And we've got 3 multiplying onto x minus 1. So you can see here, when you're multiplying onto a common factor, so x minus 1 is common on the top and the bottom, we can cancel those out. And we're left with 2 over 3. You could have done the cancelling a little bit earlier over here, but that just shows you exactly how it works. For this last example, we're going to repeat the same process, except this time I've thrown a few minuses in just to make sure we know what we're doing here. So we'll start off with the first fraction. We've got 2x over minus 3. You can see we've got divided by the fraction, so what I'm going to do is make it times, and I'm going to get the reciprocal. I'm going to flip this. So I've got minus 2 on the top now, and minus x plus 2 goes on the bottom. Now, because we're going to be multiplying this minus 3 right across both of these values, I've got to place the brackets there straight away. And what we do now is multiply the top. So 2x times minus 2, we're going to get minus 4x. And over here, we've got a minus 3 times minus x. So once again, it's going to multiply twice. It's once there and a second time onto that value there. So we've got minus times a minus, so it's going to become plus. And 3 times x, so it's 3x. And here we've got minus 3 times plus 2. So 3 times 2 is 6. You've got that minus, so it's minus 6. So there's your final answer.